Okay, Liz, we can get started. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Liz Kukla. I'm the Secretary of the Board of Zoning Appeals. And I'm going to read the preamble for you this morning, November 15th, 2021. In compliance with notification requirements of the city's open meeting law in section 101.021 of the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of orders. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature for asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raise hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Please note that call-in users can unmute by using star six. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube for public view. We've also provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak in a particular case via our website and email. All requests to speak on a particular matter have been considered. We've also received emails from those who have provided written comment on a particular matter. Back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, do we have any postponements or anything today? No, ma'am, I don't believe so. Would you like me to call the roll? Please do, thank you. Ms. Barnes? Barnes is present. Ms. Faith? Present. Ms. Brown? Present. Ms. Britt? Here. Madam Chair, we have a quorum. Wonderful. As we said, there's no postponements on withdrawals. So uh, do we have any council people signed up today? No, Madam Chair, but we do have Director Collier. He's here for the Sherwin-Williams case. If we could take his first. Actually, Actually, I do see Councilman Hairston just logged in. Okay, we'll we'll go ahead and start with this, Sherman Williams. So, uh, Ms. Faith, go ahead and uh, get that case in, please. Sorry, I was having a headphone issue. Okay. Um, do we? Uh, these are uh, actually two separate cases, uh, um, but sort of bundled together. So uh, we'll start with 21-170 first. That's at 1400 West 3rd Street. Uh, and the Sherwin-Williams company owner proposes to erect a... Excuse me, there's my video. Uh, the Sherwin Williams company proposes to erect a 4 story parking structure and surface parking lot in a limited retail business district with an urban core overlay district and a 9 height district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are. Four and number four states that approval of the city planning commission and the landmarks commission is required. Would you like me to read both cases now, Madam Chair? Or do yes, one at a time. Okay. Second case that's calendar number 21 171 at 1450 West 3rd Street. The Sherwood Williams Company owner proposes to erect a 36 story office building and surface parking lot in a limited retail business district and an urban core overlay district and a nine height district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinance as stated in the agenda and the public record 
of which there are three. And number three is also that approval of city planning and the landmarks commission is required. Those are the cases. Madam Chair to Ms. Brown. Okay, I am swearing in all who are present for these two cases. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? And please raise your hand, state I do, provide your name and your address. Uh, I do. Uh, my name is Tim Muckley, and I am the director of uh, of of uh, corporate real estate insurance company. My address is 101 Prospect Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio. I do. This is Julie Young with Sherwin Williams. The address is 101 West Prospect Avenue. I also Anyone do. Else? Yep, I also do. My name is Matthew Heisey. Um, I'm at 3142 Prospect Avenue with Vocon. I do. Um, my husband and I, Tanika and Jermaine Glass, owners of Glass Academy, 18403 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44122. You know, ma'am, your case is your case will come later. I do, Donald Pettit. I'm the secretary of the Landmarks Commission, uh, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Do Freddie Collier, director of the Cleveland City Planning Commission. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Anyone I else do. for the Sherwin Williams case? Yes, ma'am, I do. My name is John Zegan with Osborne Engineering at 1100 Superior Avenue. Thank you. Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the issue of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. The property was originally zoned semi-industry in 1929. In 1988, it was changed to limited retail business. In the history of this property that we found in the Landmarks uh, office, the project or the building was erected in 1880, and it was a one-story brick building. In 1927, there was an addition and the building was listed as the Greyhound office and then later the Ohio Bureau of Unemployment Services. There's one variance on file in calendar 01-189. A variance was granted to demolish a building and establish a surface parking lot at this address. And then in the more recent history, we didn't find anything that was of, that was of, re of relevance. And that's all that I had, Madam Chair. Okay, um, you have history for... Um... 171 address as well as this all together. It's all together. Okay, great. All right, we'll move on to the legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Pollen is requesting area variances from the urban core overlay maximum setback, garage screening, and principal frontage requirements <laughs> of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Um, so who will be the spokesperson for this case? I, I will, Madam Chair, uh, Chairperson. And you are? Uh, Tim Muckley. Okay, Tim. Okay, go ahead and get started, Tim. All right. Th thank you. So, so first of all, I'd like to start by probably breaking these into, just to make it easier, break them into what I'm going to call Peel 1A and Peel 1B. And the Peel 1A is a setback from the primary uh, Front Age Street. Uh, the current current zoning requirement is three foot a three foot maximum setback to the primary frontage street. Uh, we're requesting a setback of four point seven feet, uh, four feet seven inches. Sorry, the requested variance is only uh, one foot seven inches. Uh, so the the requested uh, variance is not large. Um, the primary street setback to West Third Street cannot comply with the maximum setback requirement due to physical hardship. The building foundation extends beyond the footprint of the proposed building. If uh, the proposed plan met the zoning requirement, then the building foundation would encroach into the public right of way, 
as a result, uh, the site is physically constrained from meeting the zoning regulations. And I, I would ask uh, if we could advance to uh, two more slides. And we'll maybe one more. And and I'd ask that uh, John Z can uh, can speak to the the technical issues with the uh, the foundations. Thanks, Tim. So what we see in this exhibit um, at the bottom of the page is the um, the underground level of the parking garage and the 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 footer uh, foundation for that garage. The um, the dark dashed line or double dashed line down the middle of the page is the right of way line, and so you can see in order to construct our footer, we have to put an earth retention system immediately against that right of way line. If we were to pull the building the four foot seven inches closer to put it on uh, right on the property line, then that entire foundation system would move to the right into the public right away. And um, West Third Street underground is, is um, extremely busy in terms of buried utilities, including gas mains, steam mains, water mains, and sewer mains. So um, the physical hardship represented here is that we would have to excavate and put this foundation very close to those existing utilities and potentially put the, um, uh, public in danger because the public utilities would be at risk for damage during construction. Great, thank, uh, thank you, John. Thank you. We we'll go back to Tim. Yep. And as John mentioned that the West Third Street right away is filled with with uh, uh, extensive public utility infrastructure, including uh, buried utility mains. Those are very close to the property line and uh, you know need need to be protected. Um, the proposed site plan includes uh, continuous sidewalks. If you would please advance another slide. Actually, uh, the next one probably shows it better. So the proposed site plan includes continuous sidewalks and pedestrian space from the back of curb at West Third Street to the front of the building. The building also covers the entire block of West Third, and it's for these reasons the pro proposed site plan will appear to the public to comply with the zoning requirement. The proposed design uh, does not alter the essential character, which is desired for the urban core overlay district, uh, which is to foster the development of dense, vibrant, mixed use neighborhoods that encourage a quality pedestrian experience. Um, the, over, the urban core achieves this goal by setting forth requirements for consistent street walks, pedestrian oriented uh, building features. No adjacent properties will suffer detriment because of the proposed variance. The requested variance will not interfere with delivery of governmental services. The encroachment in the right of way is an, uh, as an alternative measure to resolve the, the predicament. But as John explained, there's a lot a, of uh, physical utilities that are within that right of way that could, could be damaged or uh, cause additional problems. Um, the proposed plan observes the spirit and intent uh, behind the zoning requirement because it creates a consistent street wall as near the right away line as feasible given the physical constraints. So, so in summary, you know, due to the, the geotechnical composition of the soils, which require spread footers that extend beyond the garage footprint and the extensive public utility infrastructure that is located within the existing road right, right, right away along West third, uh, it would create a practical difficulty and unnecessary hardship to comply with the existing three foot maximum setback. If, um, if our variance uh, was to be refused, it would require a, a garage design to accommodate a foundation system that could fit within the three foot uh, maximum setback. You know, such limitation would be significant cost and design implications and deprive Sherwin of a substantial property right. And um, lastly, lastly, as you can see from the site plan, there will be continuous sidewalks and pedestrian space from West Third to the front of the garage. Uh, the one foot seven inch setback variance will not be noticeable to the typical pedestrian and will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the uh, urban core overlay district, which is to foster the development of dense, vibrant, mixed use neighborhoods and encourage a quality pedestrian experience. 
So, so that's with regards to to the setback off of West Third. Um, there also there is a <laughs> setback uh, requirement along the secondary front streets, which is along uh, uh, Saint, uh, West Sixth and Saint Clair. Um, the proposed secondary front street setback from West Sixth Street is 119 feet nine inches in length. The zoning requirement is three foot. The requested variance is 116 feet and nine inches. The proposed secondary front street setback from St. Clair Avenue is 83 feet, three inches in length. The zoning requirement is uh, three foot. The requested variance is 80 feet, three inches. The proposed site plan proposes, uh, proposes the development of the West Third Street frontage and reserves the West Sixth Street frontage and the St. Clair Avenue frontage for future development. If you would be able to go back one slide, You can see that the overall plan for this block is to have you know future development both along the West Sixth Street side and the the, the St. Clair side, which um, you know would be up at that uh, requested you know streetscape. Uh, the West Sixth Street and St. Clair Avenue are not proposed as street frontage for the for the garage. In the future, there will be buildings along West Sixth Street and St. Clair Avenue to create a consistent street wall and include pedestrian oriented building features. According to the guidelines of the urban core overlay district, the existing character of the West 6th Street and St. Clair Avenue frontage is at grade parking and it would remain as at grade parking. This sub, uh, proposed site plan does not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. No adjacent properties will suffer detriment because of the proposed variance. The proposed variance will not adversely affect the delivery of governmental services. And the proposed variance observes the spirit and intent of the zoning requirement. The future development of West 6th Street and St. Clair Avenue frontage is intended to honor the character of the neighborhood. Um, under the current uh, interpretation of the zoning code where West 3rd Street is a primary frontage street and where St. Clair Avenue and West 6th are secondary streets, it would require the initial building development to stretch the entire city block from West 3rd to St. Clair to West 6th down to the vacated portion of Frankfurt Avenue. Um, due to the fact that we own an entire city block and the zoning code requires a, a maximum setback of three foot on West 3rd, St. Clair, and West 6th, it would require the initial building development to be spread over the entire 3.2 acres, which would cause a physical difficulty and unnecessary hardship. If the variance were denied, Truman would be required to spread our garage over the entire city block and eliminate our ability to reserve land for future development, which would deny Truman of a, a substantial property right. Uh, the intent and purpose of the, of the maximum setback in the urban core overlay district was to create a vibrant streetscape and quality pedestrian experience. The intent was not to require owners to unnecessarily spread out their development and utilize all the uh, developable land. We are creating those quality uh, pedestrian experiences along West Third Street. The same quality of pedestrian experiences will be created along St. Clair and West Sixth Street when those areas are developed in the future. So that's what, all that I have for. Um, appeal number one. Should I move on to the appeal number two? Uh, yes, just go through all, all three. All of them. Okay. So, um, the current requirement for the, um, um for the, the lot is screening of the of the surface parking by a liner building or facade along the principal and secondary streets. Um, the proposed site plan uh, has a liner along West Third Street. Uh, the proposed site plan intends to reserve the West Sixth Street and St. Clair Avenue frontages for future development. Um, as I've previously show, shown you, the West Sixth and St. Clair Avenue are not proposed as street frontage for for the garage. In the future, there'll be buildings along West 6th Street and St. Clair Avenue to create a consistent street wall and include pedestrian oriented buildings. The existing use is at grade parking. You know, uh, in 10 of the site plans, we can continue the existing use until future phases of development are, are developed. Um, the site plan proposes improvements to the existing at grade parking lot in response to the request made by the neighborhood design review committees, the downtown flats district, and the historic warehouse district. Uh, design review committees. The landscape and screening proposed on the site plan are enhanced above the zoning requirements for the landscaping frontage strip, uh, strips to the satisfy to satisfy design review recommendations. 
The proposed site plan upgrades improves the existing conditions and the existing usage through new paving, lighting, signage, and enhanced planting. The proposed site plan does not alter the central character of the neighborhood. No adjacent properties will suffer detriment because of the proposed variance. The proposed variance will not adversely affect the delivery of gov governmental services. And the proposed variance observes the spirit and intent of the zoning requirement. The future development of West 6th Street and St. Clair Avenue frontage is intended to honor the character uh, of the neighborhood. You know, under the, the requirement of the zoning code, Sherwin would be required to develop the entire uh, 3.2 acres as part of the initial development in order to screen any surface parking. This would require Sherwin to build space that it does not need today in order to satisfy the zoning requirements and forego the opportunity to develop a residential or mixed use building there in the future, which creates a practical difficulty and unnecessary hardship. If the variance were to be denied, Sherwin would be required to build a liner building along St. Clair and West 6th Street, which it does not need and would prevent the parcel from being developed in the future, thus depriving Sherwin of a substantial property right. When this area is developed in the future, the surface parking will either be eliminated or be screened with residential or mixed use development along West 6th and St. Clair. Therefore, this variance is not contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. And then lastly, on appeal number three, um, it, it specifies that the code specifies that um, when, when there is access to a secondary street or alley uh, that abuts the property, that there would not be access to the principal street along the principal street frontage. So on this, this would mean that um, as you, uh, uh, that basically no access would be along West Third Street as long as these parcels had access to uh, West Six and uh, Saint Clair or uh, Superior Avenue. The access from the parking structure on West Third Street is de is designed as an exit only, which is safer than a two way access. The proposed site plan shows an access on West Third Street where Frankfurt Avenue was vacated. However, the access on West Third Street is proposed to be restricted with a physical barrier or gate. The proposed site plan closes uh, the vacated portion of Frankfurt Avenue at the intersection of West 3rd Street and limits tr uh, traffic to the occasional semi truck entering West 3rd Street. All other delivery traffic uh, exits west to West 6th Street. Per the city uh, of Cleveland zoning code and the urban overlay district, uh, the, the, the intent is to minimize conflicts between vehicle and pedestrians and screening off of screening of off street parking and service areas. The proposed site plan reduces the number of pedestrian uh, auto traffic crossing points. As a result, the proposed site plan observes the spirit and intent behind the, the urban core overlay. And I think we have a, a slide that shows the, the existing number of curb cuts. Actually, I think we're on to the, to the the other, you know, it, 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 so um, I think go back maybe a couple slides. Couple more. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, if those, I, are, those there, are all the slides I have for this for this part of the presentation. Yeah. John Z, can you can you speak to the, the the number of existing curb cuts and how many will be left afterwards? Absolutely, I'm going to pull that slide at least on my side so that I can um, reference it. Just one moment. So, in the existing condition, as Tim mentioned, um, there were more curb cuts, especially on West Third, than there will be in our proposed plan. In the existing condition in the block that our parking garage is on between St. Clair and Frankfurt Avenue, there were 2 curb cuts in our proposed plan. There's just 1 curb cut on that block. In the existing condition on the block between Frankfurt and superior, there was, of course, uh, the public street, which is Frankfurt Avenue, which is now um, vacated and as Tim mentioned, blocked off except for. The occasional delivery truck that will exit the site at that location. And there were also 2 existing. Um, uh, curb cuts on that block 
and the new plan has zero curb cuts on that block. And just to speak to the development as a whole, because there is uh, the issue of the at grade parking at the at the rear or the west side of the property. In the existing condition, there were a total of five curb cuts there, including um, Frankfurt Avenue. In the proposed condition, there will be just three curb cuts there. It's also worth mentioning on St. Clair, there's there's one curb cut uh, in the existing condition, and there will be the same curb cut in the proposed condition. On Superior Avenue, there there was uh, one curb cut historically, which uh, will be eliminated in the proposed condition. I'll send it back to Tim then. Thank you, John. <clears throat> the proposed garage exit on the West 3rd Street is less impactful to the road network than an exit on the West 6th Street because West 3rd Street is classified as a collector and West 6th Street is classified as a local road. Existing traffic data indicates that West 6th Street is currently operated at an unacceptable level of service, but West 3rd Street currently operates at an acceptable level of service. The plan to route PM peak hour traffic leaving the, the parking garage to West 3rd Street creates no new traffic impact on the West 6th Street. The applicant does not propose to take full and ordinary uh, vehicle access from the principal street frontage on West 3rd Street. The proposed drive is an exit drive for delivery vehicles. In this sense, the variance is not large or substantial. Supplies, including food and office essentials, are proposed to be delivered to the site daily. The driveway on West 3rd Street is only proposed for use of large semi truck and trailer delivery vehicles exiting the site. The proposed variance is required to allow the deliveries to arrive from the public right of ways surrounding the property. No adjoining properties will suffer any detriment because of the variance. The variance will not adversely affect the delivery of gov governmental services. Supplies, including food and office essentials, are proposed to be delivered to the site daily. The driveway on West 3rd Street is only proposed for use of large semi truck and trailer delivery vehicles exiting the site. The site is surrounded uh, three sides by roadways classified as either arterial or major collectors. Superior Avenue West is an arterial roadway. St. Clair and West 3rd Streets are major collectors. West 6th Street is classified as a local road. These roads are planned and designed to carry more traffic than our local roads. I don't think that uh, this section of the code uh, contemplates a situation where, where an owner has uh, has ownership of two full city blocks and has vacated a street that separates those two city blocks. To deny sure one access to West Third Street for two contigu con contiguous city blocks creates a physical difficulty or practical difficulty and unnecessary hardship. Um, if this variance were to be denied, sure one would be would not be permitted to act access West 3rd Street for a span of almost 500 feet, which would deprive Sherwin of a substantial property right. For the purpose and intent of, of the, uh, the provisions of the urban core overlay district is to minimize conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians and screening of off street parking and service areas. Eliminate, um, eliminated the, we've eliminated the number of vehicular access points to just one point along that 500 foot stretch uh, of West 3rd Street, and is this is not uh, contrary to the to the purpose and intent of the overlay district. And then, with regards to appeal number four, we'll, we're willing to accept the condition of um, that we have to comply with the city planning and landmarks commission. Uh, thank you. This, does that conclude your presentation? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else from the uh, project team want to speak? I'm so, I'm sorry, Madam Chairman. Um, one other thing I just just would did want to bring up on this. Um, we are getting ready to submit tomorrow for um, to the uh, joint design review and planning commission. Um, we have, um, and I was hoping that the slide, apparently this slide did not get put in here, um, but we are currently looking at a revision to this parking garage, which would which would shrink it by one, what they call one bay from, uh, which would actually make it smaller and make it go up one level. And so it would pull it further away from St. Clair to uh, it would uh, make that, that distance between there 120 feet. That has not been approved by the planning commission yet or the design review. So we did not want to specifically ask for that variance today 
but if that does get approved, we would come back before this board for a, a, a modification of that variance. Okay, thank you. Um, so my earlier question, anyone else on the project team want to speak? No? Okay. Uh, Ms. Kukla, you had your hand up. Yes, Madam Chair. I just want to, for the record, state that, and I apologize for not stating it um, in the history, but the Urban Form Overlay District was established in uh, 2016. And just for the record. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, if no one else from the project team wants to speak, uh, I will call on uh, Mr. Pettit. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, board members. Um, I just want to summarize our review of this project to date. Uh, due to the importance of the project and the overlapping jurisdictions here, uh, this was reviewed uh, by a joint committee of the Downtown Flats Design Review Committee and the Historic Warehouse District Design Review Committee, as well as the Joint Commission of the City Planning Commission and the uh, Cleveland Landmarks Commission. Uh, this has been reviewed twice to date. Uh, on uh, July 20th, we approved the project conceptually. Uh, on September 14th, it was reviewed and approved for uh, schematic design. Uh, the Joint Commission approved the uh, tower and the pavilion as presented and we approved the north block and the garage uh, including the recommendations of the design review committees uh, those conditions included studying the increase by one foot of the height of the first floor of the garage building studying the potential of the garage to receive additional floors in the future considering a temporary scrim to be approved which can be changed when permanent screening is provided on the north and west face of the garage facade and to continue studying uh, development of the hardscape and pedestrian experience along vacated Frankfurt Avenue. Uh, so in summary, the, the joint commission uh, supports the project. We have no objection to the variances being sought today and we have a meeting scheduled for November 30th to give the project final approval. Uh, so we support this with the understanding that this still has to come back for final review by the uh, Joint Commission of the Planning Commission and, and Landmarks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pettit. Um, okay, I'll call on Director Collier. Yes, thank you, Mr. Pettit, for saying everything that uh, I've had planned to say. Very well spoken. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, but I do want to reinforce the fact that we have been working intimately with uh, Cheryl Williams. Um, this is a three pronged approach that actually brings together uh, the uh, body of the various committees to review this project. Uh, Mr. Muckley has laid out uh, the specifics of the hardships associated with this. But what I want to highlight today is the uh, spirit and intent of Cheryl Williams uh, to move toward meeting what our objectives are from a planning standpoint. Uh, Maurice, is, am I, is it okay if I share my screen? Can you allow me to share my screen momentarily? Yeah, one second, Fred. Sure. Okay, try it now. You should be able to share your screen. Okay. Is it working? It is not. Hmm. Hang on. Let me try this. Give me one second. Hmm. 
Hold on, let me make you co-host. Maybe then you can share. It's not working out well, so I'm going to go ahead and just explain it just to uh, save time. Um, with respect to the urban uh, overlay, uh, one of the key objectives that we wanted to achieve was to build on parking lots downtown. Um, this is key uh, with respect to creating infield development. Uh, this particular block, as you many of you know, is a sea of parking. And one of the uh, reasons that we wanted to see this develop was to create that infill and create a mixed use scenario in this district. When it was announced that uh, Sherwin Williams was looking for a new uh, home and this uh, block was selected, we saw that as a key opportunity, um, the desire of Sherwin Williams to wanna build vertical was something that as a city we needed to see. Um, and the way in which the site is developed, developed represents the first step in the maturation of fulfilling that vision of building out these parking lots. A couple of the variances that you have uh, heard today with respect to the setbacks, uh, although on its face, it sounds like it's um, degrading uh, what we intend, it's actually moving us into the right direction. Rather than having mid-rise structures up here, which was originally envisioned, uh, Sherwin Williams is building a vertical tower, which many of you know uh, from who are from Cleveland, who see Cleveland, that our skyline is in desperate need of another tower. So we embrace the notion of a tower versus mid-rise development. What that did, however, is leave areas of the parking lot that exists here uncovered. We saw it working with Sherwin Williams as an opportunity for future development which Sharon Williams intends to pursue. So we believe that the tower, the garage, and these initial investments will lead to further investment activity on those outlots that are reserved for future opportunity. The other component that I do wanna highlight is the fact that uh, with respect to the curb cuts and the minimal curb cuts that are being introduced here, we saw that also as a plus also meeting the spirit of a more walkable environment in downtown. We worked together to address particularly that third street facade where there is ground floor commercial space that has been added. And if you were to see an elevation of the actual um, garage facade on West Third, it actually mimics the tower element. So it doesn't feel like a garage as you're traversing down West 3rd Street. With respect to St. Clair Avenue, as well as uh, West 6th Street, those are the sites that will be built out for future development opportunity. So you will have frontage, which is the intent of the urban core overlay on St. Clair, West 3rd, as well as West 6th. The last piece of this that we believe is really important um, is the uh, Superior uh, Avenue side as well. Um, the parking lot that you see there at West 6th and Superior Avenue is also opportunity for the company to expand. And as you know, um, with respect to uh, downtown being a more dense environment, um, having the ability to expand in some cases is limited unless you're going vertical. But here, this was a site that offered the opportunity for Sharon Williams to meet its long-term goals, help us advance toward our civic goals, and also bring 3,000 employees to the heart of the downtown core. So uh, the administration supports um, this proposal. This has received all of the schematic approvals that have been uh, conveyed by Mr. Pettit, and we're looking forward to the November 30th meeting um, to review this for uh, final overall uh, approval. Thank you, my illustrations would have been more compelling, but you had to settle for me talking. So forgive me, thank you. Uh, I, I think you did a good job, Director Collier. We didn't, we didn't need illustrations, so thank you. Um, all right, board, um, we see this is an important project for, you know, for the city and the region. And uh, we had Director Collier gracing us with his presence this morning. 
So it just kind of shows the level of importance here. So I will open it up to you if you have any questions or comments, or if you want to move with a motion. I have a question, Madam Chair. Sure, go ahead, Member Brown. And uh, actually, I, I was thinking of this question before Director Carl your made his presentation, but uh, he also provoked the question. So I appreciate uh, creating the opportunities for future mixed use development uh, in certain key parts of the site and especially along West 6th Street. And I am interested in uh, timing for the proposed future development or if there's any um, expectation uh, of timing, if not a, a hard project date. You're muted, Director. You're muted, Director. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'll turn this over to Tim, but I'll uh, give you some insight uh, with respect to some of the things that uh, has been discussed. Um, there has been uh, quite a bit of discussion about the prospect of office housing and uh, some mixed use, uh, particularly on those sites along St. Clair and West 6. Um, even to the point of the prospect of RFP, um, you know, opportunity for that. Um, we know that when you have 3,000 bodies added to a footprint like this in the warehouse district where you already have uh, significant activity going on, that uh, we see this as a potential real opportunity for that type of development to occur. And there will be development interests that would want to build uh, right next to this headquarters. The other thing from a planning perspective that we think is extremely relevant is that we want people to live and work in place. Um, and as downtown continues to grow in the last census, the downtown population grew by 40%. And this was a census that was plagued with uh, uh, individuals not filling out their forms and a federal administration that was not friendly to the census, yet we still uh, grew 40% in downtown uh, with respect to our numbers. So the fact that you have uh, these additional uh, individuals that are gonna be coming into and out of downtown, our goal is to capture them either living there or either their money uh, with spending there. Um, so we see this development as being uh, something that's very real uh, of course, I can't give you a drop dead date, but just we believe that the intent is that we will not have an issue with getting development interest to locate um, um, along the St. Clair and West 6th Street corridor. Yes, uh, th thank you, Director Collier. Um, I, I would echo what he said. Um, we, we took, a, I worked extensively with uh, CBRE to, to make sure that we as we laid this out and as we structured the garage, that, that there was sufficient room from West 6 to, to the edge of the, the parking garage to accommodate um, at least 100 foot uh, deep bay retail, and which is a very standard, uh, you know, a retail uh, depth. And then, you know, we were kind of looking more at residential potential along St. Clair, but um, if if we get approved on the the change we made to the garage, it would increase that depth to at least 120 feet, and again would would allow more flexibility for um, retail, uh, residential, uh, hotel. I mean, I mean, <clears throat> and keep in mind, you know, when Sherwin acquired this site, we knew that this was really more land than what we just needed. But you know, we've got 3,000 plus employees who will be coming down here every day. And so we want to see that get developed. We want to see thriving retail so, so that our people have a place to go have lunch or, or go do a little shopping after work. So I, I can't give a specific timeline, but you know, we have very, a lot of interest and, in, you know, moving that development along just, you know, just for the benefit of our, our own employees. Thank you. My last question is uh, what's the timeline for construction when do you expect what's being proposed to be completed so, so right now we're still looking at having uh taking first occupancy um in uh, november of 2024 now 
because of a tower, it will take a while for us to, to get everything fully built out and you know fully uh, occupied. But we anticipate that you know the garage and the tower would both be open uh, by the end of 2024. Did that uh, satisfy all your questions? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, uh, board. Any other board members have questions or comments? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, um, I thank my colleague Ms. Brown for her questions. Um, I have no questions myself. I'll go to a motion. If there's no further discussion, proceed. All right. Uh, thank you to Director Collier for his oversight and overview of the vision of the project going forward uh, to Mr. Pettit for his detail of the process of uh, approval and its thoroughness to date um, and for the uh, concise and excellent presentation by the appellant's representatives. Uh, we know that this is a project that is uh, in the core of the historic part of the city um, there have been buildings there uh, up and coming down for centuries now. And so uh, we know that there's um, extenuating circumstances with uh, public utilities and land stabilization in that area. Um, and uh, and it's, uh, it, it's also on a, a parcel of land that has been needing uh, development for quite a a number of years now. So uh, with all that taken into account, Madam Chair, I move that we go ahead and approve both calendar number 21-170 and 21-171. Thank you, Ms. Madam, Rachel, Madam Chair. Yes. Madam Chair, yeah, I just wanted to point out that they're not, you're not granting a variance to the uh, approval of the City Planning Commission. Uh, so that would be number four on the first one and number three on the second. Yeah, uh, I was just about to say that. Thank you, Maurice. <laughs> yes. Okay, we have a motion. Can I have a second, please? Second, Ms. Barnes. Ms. Barnes with the second. Uh, go ahead, call the roll, please, Ms. Cooper. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Ms. Vape? Yes. Ms. Brett? Yes. Calendars 21-170 and 21-171 are granted. They will be ratified next week and we will send you a letter. All right, thank you everyone. Great presentation. Yes. Thank, th th thank you. Thank, thank you. you, looking forward to seeing this uh, come to fruition. And thank you, well done board. Thank you. Thank you, thank Director, you, Director Collier. Thanks everyone. Okay, we have uh, Councilman Harrison here, so we'll move on to calendar number 21-177. All right. All right, as a courtesy to the Councilman, uh, we will take his case next. Uh, that moves us on to calendar number 21-177 at 18403 Euclid Avenue. Remarkable Homes Realty Corporation. Uh, Tanaka Glass owner proposes to erect approximately 600 linear feet of six foot high chain link fence and two parking gates in a D2 general retail business district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinance as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are two. Uh, with that, to you, Ms. Brown. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, uh, state I do, provide your name and your address. I do, Tanika Glass, 18403 Euclid Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio, 44122. Councilman, are you still here? And if so, you are muted. I 
Um, Councilman, please use star six to unmute yourself. I would suggest that we proceed and uh, if, if the councilman joins us, we can always take his comments. All right, yeah, still zero radio silence there. <laughs> okay, we can move on to this year of property then. Thank you, Madam um, Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since 19... 29. Actually, uh, excuse he's available. Can we swear him in now? <laughs> oh, yes. Councilman, if you could raise your hand, state your name and address, we can swear you in. All right, I don't know if you all can see me. Uh, Councilman Anthony Harrison, Ward 10, uh, 601 uh, Lakeside. Okay, Madam Chair, we're ready. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. Okay, history of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since 1929. I didn't find very many records at all for this address in our records administration office. I only found that in 1941, there was a permit issued to erect a sign pole for a club. <clears throat> there are no variances on file. And in the more recent history, we found that in um, 2006, through 2018, there were food licenses issued to the property. And in 2013, there was a permit issued to establish use as a kids, quote, kids daycare. And then in 2021, January of this year, a license to operate a daycare was applied for. And that's all that I have that's relevant, Madam Chair. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting an area variance from the fence requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Um, okay, Ms. Glass, go ahead and present your case. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Tanika Glass. My husband and I are the owners of this building. We bought the building last year. So we renovated the whole entire building inside and out. So what we're asking, um, we believe in safety, number one, for our children and educating our children and bringing something to Cleveland on a whole different level. So what we're asking for... If we can have a six feet gate going around the whole entire building, because we are experiencing, uh, we have cameras, we are experiencing people uh, walking, hanging out on our property. We're finding um, needles and condoms, all different things going on. So for the safety purpose of the children, when we open up the building, we would like the six feet to go all the way around the building. Uh, Ms. Glass, what kind of business is this? This is a child care, a child care center. We also have one in uh, South Euclid as well. Okay, child care center. Um, and what will be your hours of operation? Six a.m. to six p.m. On what days? Monday through Friday. And so you would like to have a six foot chain link fence um, surrounding the property here, how you have it laid out on this. Yes, ma'am. Schematic, correct. Ms. Glass. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, yes. Yeah, so you, you're, you're asking for a six foot chain link fence around the perimeter yes, of the property. Okay. Yes. Just wanted to clear that Kelly, up. Kelly, you're cutting in and out. Really? All right, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. now it's okay. Okay, good. Um, uh, Madam Chair? <clears throat> yes. Uh, just to note, please note that the, the plan that's proposed is the one on the left. The one on the right uh, <clears throat> is a drawing that we were working on, uh, uh, Ms. Glass and I were working on 
uh, it is not the proposed plan. It's the one that is proposed is uh, to the left with the highlighting. Okay, great. Thank you for clearing that up. Um, Maurice, do we have someone from city planning here? Just me. Okay. So uh, my question is, um, if we're using the plan on the left, is the fence along Euclid still going to be four foot back from the sidewalk? Yes, because I know that's okay, the so, clearance. So you're replacing this existing fence, is that? No, we're keeping the existing fence because that fence is five feet high. So we were going to, we was going to use that as a marking and extend the six feet gate to go all the way around the, the perimeter of the building. Um, I do want to clarify too, I just wanted to make sure it was okay that we do get gating going across in the front as well because of the fact that we having people come and just, um, you know, just sitting around, you know, on our property. Well, the only thing that the, the existing fence that goes along Euclid is right at the sidewalk. It's not four feet back from the sidewalk. That's why I asked that question. Okay. So are you going to move that fence or is that fence staying there? The fence is because... staying there. Okay, and then you're going to have a gate that goes all the way across the green space next to the left of the driveway? Yes. Okay, so the plan is drawn incorrectly then, so there, it will not be four feet back from the sidewalk on Euclid Avenue. Well, well the thing of it is, if now the question, if can we extend that from that um that existing gate to go across? Or if we have to bring it back four feet, we will. I mean we can bring it back I am just feet. Yeah, I'm just asking because that's what was on the plan. That's I'm just trying to understand what you know what, what you want to do, that's all. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Bring it back four feet and then just extend the gate going around. Yeah, because you it looks like you've got uh, the driveway that's about four feet back where the parking lot, where the parking spaces stop, it probably would be easier to take the gate across that area than right at the sidewalk is what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what we going to do. Okay. And plus that would, that would mean you'd be repairing that one, this one piece of fence that looks like the top rail is missing, which would be great. Yes, we were going to, yeah, we was going to do that as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, we have we have absolutely no objections to this, Madam Chair. I just wanted to get clarity on on uh, what was here and what's what's on the plan. That's all. Great, thank you, Maurice. Okay, I'll open up to the board. Um, Madam Chair, did we hear from Councilman Harrison? Uh, no, I was going to wait for last, but um, yeah, we'll hear from him now. And wait on you guys. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you board. Um, always a pleasure to be here. Uh, you are 1 of my 1 of my favorite uh, group of people always to work with. Uh, but briefly, don't, don't try to grease it up. Councilman. Don't try to butter up. butter hey, us up. <laughs> you all have been excellent. You know, we've achieved a lot of good things with this uh, board uh, for our community. So we thank you for that. But briefly, because I had to go back into committee meeting. We're here in our dollar uh, required re request. Uh, I agree that that the that, that, that fence is needed. Uh, we are working with the fifth district police and also RTA police to try to deal with the issues that are having that are that they are having at the corner there. The the the, the biggest concern and why they need the fence is the, the Euclid Motel that sits just uh, east uh, west of that location it has been a, a headache for me and for the neighborhood for quite some time. And uh, we were successful in closing down one of those motels on the opposite end of Euclid. We are working uh, to to try to deal with yeah, exactly there it is there, uh, deal with this uh, site here. And, uh, we just don't want to see anything happen to the young people and the people who are working at the facility. Uh, we believe that this fence will allow them to better secure the property there at the corner. The CDC Development Corporation Greater Collinwood has been in connection uh, and working with this uh, uh, group. They helped them. Um, with their sign, I believe, through uh, design review, and it just makes sense that they are allowed to put this fence there. And and I, I asked the same question Maurice did early on: was do they intend to take it to the sidewalk or right there where the green space is? And they'll they'll start the fence there where the green space is, which will allow for that four feet setback uh, that is uh, that is required. So, uh, just wanted to offer my. Um, 
comments and you know that I am in full support and the community along with the CDC uh, so that they can uh, put up this fence and secure the location and make sure that our young people are safe as they are uh, coming here uh, for, for, for care. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, yeah, I think this case is pretty straightforward. Um, so I'll uh, hand it over to the board for any, any further questions or I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, just a quick question to our um, our city planner. Uh, do you have recommendations for the type of chain link fence that you would like to have used here? Um, I, I'm okay with what she has up there now. I think she's going to. She's already stated she's going to reuse what's what's there now. So you might as well be consistent with the rest okay. of the fencing. Great. All right, Madam Chair. With that, I'll move to a motion. Uh, this will be conditional um, with the uh, support of uh, Councilman Harrison, and uh, he stated support by the CDC for this, um, and the recommendation by uh, Mr. Rulins, our city planner. Uh, we will accept the uh, standard chain link fence. Uh, as opposed to having to go to uh, a black vinyl coated one. Um, and uh, we will ask that the fencing be moved back um, along the, uh, the sidewalk uh, to a distance of four feet, uh, which uh, frankly, I think is gonna need to be an accommodation to put the gate in anyway. Uh, so we'll need a new updated plan just to uh, show that that change uh, to allow for the code and the gate is being made. Um, with that exception and that condition, I move that we go ahead and approve this. I think uh, uh, given the situation and the statement by the councilman, the uh, safety of the children is paramount in this situation. Thank you. Can I have a second? Thank Member, you. Member Barnes with the second. Call the roll, please, Ms. Cookler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Ms. Vaith? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar 21 177 is granted conditionally with the condition that the fence be moved four feet back from the property line on Euclid Avenue, and that we will receive a site plan showing those changes. And once we receive those changes, we will ratify the case and we will send the appellant a letter. All right, thank you, Ms. Glass, good luck. Thank you so nice, much. Nice God job on the all. renovation. Thank the you so much, it, it was great. a lot of hard looks work. really good, <laughs> yeah. uh, I can imagine. Sure. <laughs> You're yeah. gonna be a highlight to the neighborhood. So good, good for you. Yeah, we want to bring something totally that we got to educate these babies. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. I really you. appreciate it. You're welcome. Take All right. Uh, All right, Ms. We, Ms. Faith, we can go I, to the beginning. All right. I'm just checking to see. We haven't had any other council people join us. So we'll loop back to calendar number 21-163. That's at 2276 West 6th Street. Ben Mandel, owner, proposes to erect a 27-foot by 41-foot four-story frame single-family residence with a front-loaded garage and open rear deck in a B1 two-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances, as stated in the agenda and the public record. Um, and uh, with that, we'll go to Ms. Brown for the oath. I am swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand and reply, I do state your name and your address. Hi there, I do, Ben Mandel, uh, 2276 West 6th Street. I do, Michael Horton, 
812 Huron Road, Cleveland, Ohio. I do. I do. Moss, 601 Lakeside Avenue. I do Donna Gregonis, 3308 Lorraine Avenue. Madam Chair. Okay, that's it. Um, we'll move on to the history of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Property was originally zoned general retail in 1929. 1963, it was rezoned to the current two family district. In our records administration office, I found that in 1909, the permit was issued to erect a two-story tenement on the property. 1911, a permit was issued to erect a two-story dwelling. And in 1962, I found a certificate of occupancy was issued stating that the authorized use of the property is for dwelling units. There are no variances on file for this address and nothing of note in the more recent history. That's all that I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Opponent is requesting area variances from the garage placement, maximum gross floor area, rear yard, and side yard encroachment requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Okay, thank you. Um, who will be the spokesperson for this case? Um, Mike can, will go into the details. Yeah, yeah, I can speak. This is Michael Horton with Horton Harper Architects. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Good, good morning. The uh, what we're proposing here um, on uh, West Sixth Street in Tremont neighborhood is a single-family residence. Um, the, the house sits on a, on a one-way alley. Um, in between Herschel Ford uh, and Jefferson Avenue, the uh, sort of the the intent of the project is to, uh, given its shallow footprint uh, and narrow width, um, the fact that we're on a one-way alley, was to try to um, have a single-family residence. Thank you. Um, that can accommodate uh, off-street parking spaces. Uh, given that you know we are on the alley, um, and at the same time still have uh, first floor usable space to allow the homeowners, the future homeowners, to have um, outdoor space on the first floor. So, uh, how we achieve this was by kind of creating a, a bit of a staggered floor plan, or almost like a split level. So we have a two car tandem garage that you could see um, the lower portion of the site. And then uh, the garage door is set back to even allow room for one additional parking space. Um, that also helps to bring the, the front porch to the foreground. Um, and um, sort of, so it's not solely dominated by a side by side two car garage. Um, we also have a raised finished floor around the upper area, which allows the home to have uh, an open porch. Um, to be more, uh, I guess, pedestrian friendly. And by staggering those floor plans, we create kind of a two and a half story house. Uh, in order to do this, uh, we got the three foot side yard setbacks. Um, and at the rear yard, we've got a 19 foot, uh, three inch setback, still allows for some room for some outdoor space. And um, we've got a map setback along the front yard at six feet. And we're set back seven feet. Um, we could go a foot closer, but we did want to leave a little bit of room in case uh, a car wanted to park on that driveway if need be. Um, I think that the site plan gives you a pretty good idea, but um, let's go to the next. We can go to the next few slides to get a sense of uh, what that looks like. Um, the, the the floor plans are a bit, you know, comp complicated to describe, but if we go to the next image, you can get a sense of um, what that does here. So we've got a kind of a tapered roof line to keep the building feeling thin and, and more in proportion with some of the existing homes on the street. The uh, raised porch, we have a nice outdoor area that is engaged with the street. Um, we have a planter there to provide a buffer between the very narrow sidewalk on West 6th Street. Um, there was some concerns from HDRS about the sight lines. 
for a car backing out onto the alley if that uh, planter uh, was maybe a little bit too high. So we are correct. So we are going to uh, lower that to maintain adequate sight lines for anybody backing out to make sure anyone on their bike or walking on the sidewalk in the street is um, in view um, when backing out. So we are going to bring that down. Uh, we can go to the next few slides. There's a similar view. And then there's another view of the rear. Uh, there's a, a good view. So you can see uh, this is what we're proposing for the rear yard. Um, to the left, you can see a garage that is, is pretty close to the property line. After taking a closer look at the survey, it's about 20 inches. Um, so it, adding a fence there may preclude um, that homeowner from future maintenance of that garage. We're going to reach out to them directly uh, to discuss that to see if uh, that's something that they would prefer not to have there. If that's the case, then we would just have a, a wall of landscaping along that uh, northern edge of the property line uh, so uh, everyone can still uh, have access to full buildings. Um, I think really that's kind of the overall um, intent of the project and get another sense of some of the exterior elevations here. Um, there's a rooftop access uh, toward the middle, which will be, uh, you won't really see it uh, from the street. That was the intent so that the house didn't feel so tall. Um, and um, I think that's all we have. We open to any questions um, or any comments from Matt Moss or Donna. Thank you. Um, I will call on uh, Donna Gregonis. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Donna Gregonis, Neighborhood Development Director for Tremont West Development Corporation and Ohio City Inc. Um, so, <clears throat> as Mr. Horton did say, or did describe the um, rear fence um, going up to the neighbor's, um, along the neighbor's garage, um, there was some conversation at economic development committee regarding, um, potentially doing landscaping instead of fence and at the block club. Um, but both did approve, um, both did have favorable things to say about the project and they supported the variances, um, from economic development committee because it is mid block on an alley. Um, so they were in favor of them ultimately, but, um. Yeah, that was the only major recommendation that they wanted them to look at, but um, it was not, their vote was not contingent on that. So just wanted to make that clear. Um, and then they did go to both Black Club and Economic Development Committee. So we applaud them for doing that proactively. So thank you very much. Thank you, Donna. Um, and yeah, and for the record, um, the fence is not on the list of variances today. So, um, we don't need to address that right now. Okay, moving on, uh, Matt Moss. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is Matt Moss with the City Planning Commission. As Michael stated, this project was reviewed and approved with uh, the condition to lower or adjust that front planner for sight lines of the car driver backing out. Uh, but given the context of the street, the, the presence of active use space on the house were supportive of the variances as requested. Thank you. Um, anyone else from the project team wants to add anything before I go to the board? Okay, board questions, comments, motions. Madam chair, I think we've, uh, we've got approval from the CDC and, uh, from city planning. Um, excellent presentation by Mr. Horton today. We can see that the garage door, uh, though front facing is fully glazed. Uh, there have been accommodations made for that planner. It is a one way alley. Uh, so I think that impacts the, the, the decisions uh, on modifications here. Uh, with all that said, I think we go ahead and approve this. Uh, we know how small the lots are in that area. So I think well done to uh, the design team. And I move we Thank approve. You. Thank you. We have a motion. Can I have a second? 
I second, uh, Member Brown. All right, Ms. Brown with the second. Go ahead, call the roll, please, Ms. Kukla. And Madam Chair, this is with the understanding that number five is not being granted today regarding the approval from Cleveland. Boy, those keep slipping in there, don't they? Yep. Uh, <laughs> yes, Madam Chair, as you know, that these, yep. these are applied for without the approval of City Planning Commission. Yes, we know. Yeah, it's just, uh, right. they just keep slipping past our motions today is all I'm saying. No. Okay. All right, Ms. Barnes. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Faith? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar 21-163 is granted. It'll be ratified next week and we will send the appellant a letter. Awesome, thank you guys. Thanks everyone, good luck. Thank very you. nice house. Thank you very much. You. Have fun. Nice job. All right, we can move on to 169. Sorry, I'm having the sniffles this morning. Okay. All right, moving on. Calendar number 21-169 at 29, 2097 West 26th Street. Plum Stone CT dash Timothy Del Papa owner proposed to erect a one story frame eight foot by 12 foot wooden shed on a vacant lot in a C1 local business district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. And with that, we will go to Ms. Brown for the oath. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please raise your hand and state I do. Provide your name and your address. My name is Timothy Del Papa. I live at number 2512 Chatham Avenue, and I do affirm that the testimony I am about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Anyone I do, else? Matthew Moss, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Okay, Madam Chair. Thank you. History of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. The property was originally zoned <clears throat> general retail in uh, 1929. In 2011, it was changed to local retail business. In the records room, we found that in 1980, a permit was issued to demolish a two family dwelling on site. There are no variances for this address and nothing of note in the more recent history. Thank you, legal standard. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting an area variance from the accessory building placement requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Del Papa. Present your case. Uh, good morning, everyone. I have lived at uh, 2512 Chatham Avenue for 27 years. I've been on the street for 33. I own five houses in that immediate area. I am a landlord. I do maintain all of the, the properties uh, by myself, I am needing desperately a new shed to store all of my uh, garden equipment, garden tools. The current shed was constructed shortly after I purchased that lot in 1994. It is now, um, it has not aged well. It um, desperately again needs to be replaced. The, I am proposing that the Current shed be demolished and then rebuilt um, on that same site with a shed that is of the same style and dimensions. It is 
eight feet by by twelve feet, um, and I again am asking for a variance. So, in that this is technically a vacant lot, I do ask that I am able to put that shed there. I do own the three parcels abutting the lot. Uh, one of which is my home, 2512 Chatham Avenue, also 2101 West 26th Street, and 209 West, 2089, excuse me, West 26th Street. And the lot is abutted on the east by an alley, West 25th Place, and on the west by West 26th Street. So I. As you can hopefully it does by the pictures I do uh, <laughs> humbly pride myself on taking very good care of the properties and the shed is again essential to the uh, upkeep maintenance and maintenance of the property. So again, I am asking to be granted a variance to demolish the existing shed and to construct one virtually identical. Thank you. Thank you. You answered my question. I was going to say, is it going to go in the exact footprint of your old one? So, you yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, we'll go to Matt Moss. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Matt Moss with the Cleveland City Planning Commission. I spoke to Mr. Del Papa a few weeks ago uh, when he asked about the proper process for this. Even though the zoning code uh, requires him to either have a primary use that isn't this or to consolidate his lots. Uh, he informed me that the, and, and after we discussed it, that the cost of, of having these surveyed and consolidated just so he could replace this shed would be roughly similar to the cost of the shed itself. So uh, that's why he's here asking for a variance. I think in any other case, as a primary use in this district, we wouldn't be supportive of it. But because Mr. Del Papa owns all the surrounding property and this is a residential use that he wishes to just maintain in its current condition, we support the variance. Thank you, Matt. Okay, board. Any questions or comments, or I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, um, uh, Mr. Del Papa looks like a man after my own heart, an avid gardener, and someone who really likes to uh, uh, use landscape stone <laughs> and keep Thank up you. a good yard. So I appreciate that personally. Um, Thank you for your kind words. And I and I see you're joining us from your kitchen, so. Uh, yeah. I'm curious. I'm, about at, that. I'm at work. I'm at work. Okay. Actually. <laughs> so, um, I digress a little bit, but uh, given the testimony from Mr. Del Papa and um, uh, uh, Mr. Moss from City Planning, and the uh, description that the new shed is going to go on the existing footprint of the old shed and uh, be essentially identical. Um, and I can appreciate the fact that uh, you probably need that for all your equipment. Um, uh, I would go ahead and say that let's approve this uh, uh, variance uh, for his new shed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Member second. Brown, I second. Member Brown, second. Call the roll, please, Ms. Cooper. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Vaith? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar 21 169 is granted. It'll be ratified next week, and we will send the appellant a letter. Thank All you, right. everyone. All right. Good luck, Mr. Del Papa. I appreciate your words, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes. We'll, we'll see you. you in the spring when everything's in bloom. Okay. I will look forward <laughs> to that. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, Madam Chair, uh, moving along to calendar number 21-172. This is at 5606 Tillman Avenue. Mediterra Investments owner proposes to construct a new two-story single-family house with an attached garage on a 3,693 square foot lot in a B1 two-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are four 
Number four being that city planning approval is required prior to the issu issuance of a building permit. With that, we will go to Ms. Brown for the oath. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand, state I do, provide your name and your address. I do. My name is Mike Augustitis. <clears throat> address is 12550 Lake Avenue, Lakewood, Ohio. I do. Adam Davenport, City Planning, 601 Lakeside Avenue. Madam Chair. Thank you. History of the property, please. So, Madam, can we, Madam Chair, can we first confirm that the appellant is present today? That would be Biagio Gallo. Yes. Mr. Gallo, do you plan on speaking? Uh, on behalf of my, uh, Michael Agostides, my architect, will be speaking on my behalf. Okay. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. The property was originally zoned general retail business in 1929. In 1961, it was changed to two-family residential. We found that in the Records Administration Office that the original building on this site was a two-story dwelling, and it was erected in 1893. And then in February of this year, a permit was issued to demolish the two-story um, single or two family dwelling on this site. And that's all that I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Legal standard, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the board, appellant is requesting area variances from the maximum gross floor area, distance, and garage setback requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical Difficulty not generally shared by other lander buildings in the same district will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. And I would just like to remind the board that they do not have the authority to grant number four city planning commission approval required. So you'll just be considering the first three variances. Thank you. So who's the uh, spokesperson for the case today? I'm sorry, you broke who's up. Who's the spokesperson for the case? Is that you, Mike? Uh, that would be me. I'm sorry, uh, Madam Chair, you're, you're breaking up. And... Yeah, I'm having that problem today. Okay. Um, so go ahead, proceed. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Madam Chair, and thank you to the committee members. Uh, we appreciate the time. Uh, to present our case this morning. Um, a couple things I wanted to clear up before we start. Uh, we have made revisions to the plan and submitted them to the planning commission that would address item number one, the, uh, the floor area. Uh, we have revised the design of the, the home to meet that criteria. So the home now is within the limits of the square footage requirements for uh, 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 lot area coverage. Uh, item number two was uh, a little bit of a, an issue from our perspective. Uh, when we took that dimension, we took that off of a Google Earth uh, plan uh, and measured it uh, fr from that. Uh, we currently meet the side yard setback requirement, and we will confirm that there will be a minimum of six feet uh, between uh, the existing homes. Um, so the only thing that we are really looking for today for relief is the uh, attached garage facing Tillman Avenue. So with that, I'd like to just give a little bit of a, a history on the project. Uh, Mr. Gallo had retained uh, me to do a design for the actual renovation of the existing home. Um, initially, we, there, there, there was no intent to demolish the home. We started working on the house and found a number of structural deficiencies that uh, required us to bring a structural engineer in to review the condition of the home. Upon the recommendation of the structural engineer, uh, we, we decided to uh, demolish the home. The appropriate uh, applications were granted and the house was uh, demoed 
uh, so that we can start with a big new project. Um, the image that you see right now is a, a top right, uh, this, the Google Street View uh, right in the middle it was the existing home. We wanted to give you an indication of what the configuration of the house was so that you can see how we try to reference that scale and that style of architecture and interpret that into a more modern a more modern solution. Uh, the bottom center image is of the site as it currently exists with the house uh, removed. And then we have a more bleak uh, angle of the site uh, at the bottom right as well. Next slide, please. This is the site plan that uh, gives us a, a much better understanding of how the house will be configured on the site. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the uh, the requirement right now, or, or our, our request is for relief of the garage configuration. Uh, zoning code requires the garage to be in the back of the site. The current site width is uh, uh, 28 feet, 28 feet, six inches of, of, uh, and uh, with a six foot setback that really only allows a yield of approximately 12 and a half feet for a, the width of the house. That would be the interior dimension. We also take into consideration six inches for the sidewalls that really only yields uh, a 12 and a half foot uh, inside dimension for the house, which is uh, unusually narrow and would be very difficult for uh, my client to uh, develop as a, a, a viable uh, single family home in, in this district. Um, we also are illustrating the side yard setbacks here. We do have a 20 foot setback at the front that uh, is being, that can be seen on the lower right. Um, and uh, we have more than enough distance in the back for the rear yard setback. We're well within that distance as well. Uh, next slide, please. These are the floor plans for the, uh, for the home. Uh, there will be a partial basement, uh, which can be seen on the left. The middle image is of the first floor plan and the intent is to have a deep single car garage on the right with an entry experience on the left uh, that provided us an opportunity to provide a porch expression in the front of the house, which is consistent with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, this would be uh, the, the first floor plan would accommodate, as I said, the, the entry, the garage, a living room, dining room, kitchen configuration with a small patio in the back. Second floor would provide for three bedrooms. Um, we are anticipating or proposing that the master bedroom be configured to the back of the home where there would be less street noise with a patio that would, or with, with doors that would open on to a patio. Uh, there would be no roof deck. So we are keeping, and we did that intentionally so that we can maintain the scale of the home consistent with the rest of the neighborhood. Next slide, please. These images are, are a little darker than what we had hoped, um, but uh, the intent is to use a charcoal gray uh, lap siding for the majority of the building. Uh, we intend on using a, uh, a lighter gray at the front of the house to help articulate the porch experience. And we would like to propose a bright uh, yellow color uh, for the main entry to really help uh, identify front door for the house. Um, we will be, we are proposing that we use the same color on the back of the house that would uh, not obviously not be visible from the street. Um, the siding for the majority of the field is shown as siding number one. Siding number two would be a vertical grade. Mike, Mike uh, we're, we we don't need to go through the whole all the material building materials because okay. it's not design review. So we just want to focus in on the the uh, the the zoning variances you need. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, this this slide indicates how the uh, the house would look from the street, the perspective front, and then the perspective back. But I think we have some images here that give you a better understanding of the contextual nature of the solution, which I think would be the next slide. And this this. 
clearly gives you an, uh, the illustration of how the house would fit uh, on the site. Uh, when the images were taken for the top left, the house immediately to the left was under uh, renovation. Um, and the house on the right was still, was recently purchased and is currently under renovation. And I believe the initial image that you presented, Madam Chair, showed a more current version of the uh, style of uh, work that was being done on the house to the right. Um, what this image also provides is an, uh, an illustration of how the garage door will front Tillman. We do have glass panels along the right side of the uh, garage door, and we do have a small porch that uh, also expresses the, the consistent architectural vernacular along Tillman. So we, we feel this that the house fits comfortably in terms of height, scale, and proportion and character on Tillman Avenue. The lower right image gives you a much better understanding of how the, uh, the approach to the home would be. Uh, the, we intend on using pavers instead of a poured concrete uh, driveway, gives it a more residential feel. And um, that's, uh oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I will go to Adam Davenport. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so a couple, couple things that uh, we see from the HGRS perspective uh, when we reviewed this house over the over the summer, um, as opposed to a couple other cases uh, recently, this lot does have the depth that some of these other lots do not have. Um, I think the lot is about 130, 133 feet, um, and it, although um, we do generally like the the house's design. It's meeting the character of the the neighborhood um, yeah. with with the gable roof, the, the front porch. Uh, we feel that the front loaded garage itself is out of context with the the neighborhood. Um, uh, referred to the the lot width before by um, the architect. Uh, it is twenty eight feet um, wide, but the driveway could be on the property line. And the other setback would be three feet, allowing for a 16 foot house, which we've seen through HGRS quite a few times in Ohio City and Fremont. And this would be, although um, rover for Detroit Shoreway for such a skinny house, um, it is uh, dimensionally possible as we've seen through our committee before. So uh, this is more of us holding true to our zoning code updates in 2018 and uh, think that this is not a hardship and that uh, the applicant can meet the, the purpose and intent of the code, uh, given the characteristics of the district surrounding it. Thank you. So uh, Adam, so from city planning's pers perspective, you are not in support of these variances, is that correct? We are not in support of the front loaded garage variance. No. Okay, thank you. Okay, board, I'll open it up to questions or comments. I, I, I do have a question and a comment. There, there are, there is a precedent in the neighborhood. Oh, Mike, hold, hold, hold on a second. I was opening it up to my board, but I'll go oh, ahead. And, I'll go ahead and let you say what you say what you need to say though. So go ahead. Yes, no, go ahead, Mike, whatever you got to say. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I just do want to point out that there is precedent on the street. Uh, there is another home on the street that was uh, built within the last, uh, I say, six years that does have a front loading garage. Uh, that it's not is, correct. It, it is correct. I'm sorry. There is one on 57th. That is at the end 57th of 57th uh, is not Tillman. There are no garages, front loaded garages on this block on Tillman Avenue. 57th is a completely different street. There are no precedent for front loaded garages on Tillman Avenue, period. Okay. It is it, but visible from Tillman. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll open it up to the board now. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Member Brown. And my question uh, is to the 
owner, but maybe uh, Mr. Augustinus can answer it. But uh, it, is this home being built uh, for the owner to live in, for the owner to sell, or for the owner to rent? It's for the owner to sell. Thank you. Any other questions, Mark? Uh, Madam Chair, I had the same reaction to the plans uh, as uh, City Planner Davenport did. Um, this is, uh, we, we very rarely, uh, we very rarely have exceptions for front loading garages. Um, and as city planner Rulins noted, there are no other front loading garages on Tillman. Uh, we have a, a, a deeper lot uh, in this situation. Usually when we do exceptions, there are small lots uh, that are very restrictive. Um, and uh, uh, so I have, I have issue with the fact that uh, the plans reflect a front loading garage. Um, uh, and particularly since the home is um, being built for resale purposes. Um, so we appreciate your honesty in that regard, but um, I have to move that we uh, do not approve these variances. Okay, we have a motion. Can I have a second, please? Second, Ms. Barnes. Second, Ms. Barnes. Go ahead and call the roll, please, Ms. Coppola. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Ms. Bape? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. 221-172 is denied. This decision will be ratified next week, and we will send the appellant a letter. Great, thank you. Uh, Moving on to Dove Ave. Yes. Uh, moving on to calendar number 21-098 at 13001 Dove Avenue. This case was postponed from October 25th, 2021. Uh, this is the appellant Paul Snowball. We all remember his name. Uh, owner proposes to construct a seven space parking lot in a B1 two family residential district and a C1 local retail business district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record of which there are two. And with that to Ms. Brown. So I'm swearing in all who. Maurice. Sorry. Having some technical difficulties. There we go. Okay. I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Uh, please raise your hands and reply. I do state your name and your address. I do Paul Snowball 3635 Lattimore Road. Shaker Heights, Ohio. I do, Amanda Kramer, 9250 Miles Park Avenue. Anyone else? I do, Martha Fields, uh, Chief City Planner. Madam Chair. Thank you. History to property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Give me one moment. I thought we had had it, but let me go with uh, this. Originally was zoned general retail into family. In 2011, the general retail portion was changed to local retail. I think the most important information here that we found in the records is that in 2017, a permit was issued to demolish a one and a half story frame dwelling unit. And that's all that I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Legal standard, please. 
Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting area variances from the off street parking and fence requirements of the zoning code, as well as permission to construct a parking lot in a residential district. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Subsection 34913C provides that the board may permit temporarily or permanently the use of land in a residential district for a parking lot when the best interest of the community will be served and provided that the lot is to be used only for the parking of passenger automobiles of employees, customers, or guests of the person or firm controlling and operating the lot who shall be responsible for its maintenance. No charges to be made for parking on the lot. The lot is not to be used for sales, repair work, or servicing of any kind. Entrance to and exit from the lot are to be located so as to do the least harm to the residence district. No advertising signs or material are to be located on the lot. All parking is to be kept back of the setback building line by barrier unless specifically authorized otherwise by the board. The parking lot and portion of the driveway back of the building line are to be adequately screened from the street and from adjoining properties in a residence district by a hedge, sightly fence, or wall, not less than four feet, six inches high, and not more than five feet high, lo located back of the setback building line. All lighting is to be arranged so that there is no glare that is annoying to the occupants of adjoining property in a residence district, and the surface of the parking lot is to be smoothly graded, hard surfaced, and adequately drained. The building permit number under which the lot is to be established is to be posted, and the board may impose such other and further conditions as it may deem necessary to reduce the adverse effects of the proximity of a parking lot on the character, development, and maintenance of the residential district in which the parking lot is to be located. Everybody got all that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh... Mr. Snowball, go ahead. Um, hello, good morning, everyone. Um, so uh, I presented to the board before, and in that presentation, as stated, uh, there was um, my plan was to develop the lot located at 13001 Dove Avenue um, into additional uh, parking spaces and a combined green space and yard extension. Um, in presenting to this committee in the earlier date, I was uh, recommended to go to planning um, to review uh, the plans because there were quite a lot of variations being requested. So I did that and worked with planning and in so doing, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, revise the plan substantially such that now uh, the plan involves um, converting for the most part uh, the space in question, 13001 Dove, into mostly a green space and then to attain the additional parking by adding to the existing parking spaces on 3900-02 um, East 131st, which is the adjoining lot, which I currently own, and which you see depicted there to the right in that sketch. Um, so that's the essence of the plan. Um, I can walk through some of the existing conditions and then you know go over some of the details of the uh, proposed site. Uh, development. Um, so the current condition, uh, and if you go to a previous uh, slide, I think it will show it. Uh, um, yeah, you see some of the pictures there. Uh, I don't know if the previous slide will also show some of that. So that's that's a frontage. Um, a photograph of the existing site, which consists basically now of a vacant lot. Uh, and on the left to the rear of the lot, you see that there's a neighboring fence and there's a tree that's leaning over there in the back and some additional foliage. 
there is a wooden fence on the north end of the lot uh, that is um, six feet tall. And then on the right of the lot, you see a lot of shrubbery that's on that lot that has grown and has not been cut per se uh, by the city so far. Um, and I'll address that in a, in a minute. Um, so you can see in this overview that um, the lot is highlighted in blue there, and then my property is to the right front of the, 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 the picture. And you can see there are some cars parked there. Um, there are three across, three across, and then there's one that's double parked. I want to highlight the front of the lot. Uh, you see a green area to the left and a little green area to the right, um, close to the building. And um, at the north perimeter of the lot there, you see that there is fencing existing. Um, and that's a six foot fence that uh, connects uh, the, the vacant lot to uh, my property, or at least it stretches across that boundary and just passes the existing building on uh, 3900-02 a bit and connects to the house which is the neighboring house. I also want to highlight there are two garages that are up against the eastern perimeter of 13001, um, and they are two consecutive property garages. Uh, and that's a sheer driveway over there. So you don't see a separation so much between um, those garages or the properties. So. You know, but those are two combined properties up against the lot, and mine makes the third. Um, again, to the to the left there, you see that there are some um, the westerly property, and I'll come back to that. So, um, what I initially proposed was to put seven lot um, parking spaces on the lot itself, and in going to review, um, they made recommendations because of space limitations, safety issues, and so on that basically said, um, if I put most of the parking spaces on my existing lot, um, that would be a better uh, use um, of the, the spaces and was more acceptable. Um, so what you then see is my proposed plan to do that. In the plan, you can see that there are six parking spaces on my existing lots which would add three to what was there before. Uh, in this drawing, you can see that the parking spaces are opposite each other and face uh, the building and the vacant lot respectively. Um, each parking space is 18 feet long, 10 feet wide. There are bumper stops proposed for each parking space and um, the in you know the distance between the two sets of parking spaces is 26 feet the entrance to the lot which is existing is 19 feet to access those um, spaces left and right you also see there in your picture on the left um, landscaping strip and to the right as well landscaping strip uh, there is existing fencing on my property um, at that south end of my 3900-02 property. And uh, the planning committee, Southeast Planning Committee suggested or uh, not suggested, but required that that chain link fence be replaced with a ornamental fencing that comply with city ordinances. Um, so, you know, that would be one uh, implementation that would be uh, added to my plan. Um, on the lot itself to the left, uh, you can see there that, and it, it's somewhat small, that I would also be adding a wood privacy fence six feet tall on the westerly property line um, that adjoins the neighbor's property. And, um, at the front there, you see that there's about 20 feet of landscaping strip in addition to a ornamental fencing. And then across the front of that lot, 
there's 40 feet approximately of ornamental fencing in addition to uh, landscaping strip. Uh, to the rear left, again, where the trees were in the existing condition, I'm trying to have the city to remove that tree because it's in bad situation. It's leaning over on the neighbor's property and um, the neighbor is concerned that um, it's gonna fall on the property. So I'm trying to get the city to clean that lot up before I take position, not only with regard to those trees, but also the shrubbery on the right or easterly end perimeter of the property, which goes along the entire length from the north to the south. Um, uh, one of the other propositions or, um, or a thing that the design committee suggested was that I explore replacing that um, front landscaping strip um, with um, planting that with uh, uh, street trees because they're more hardy and would also add to the look in the front there. So I will also be doing that. Um, the last piece that I'll mention before opening it up for question is that um, to consolidate the land or um, you know, we would remove a partial, a part of the fencing that currently exists on the easterly side of the lot. Again, that extend from the north perimeter to the south perimeter, again, on the east side. It's covered up with the shrubbery that you see there, but there are, uh, is a chain link fence there, yes. Um, so I'd move about, remove about 40 foot, um, 40 feet, excuse me, of that fencing which would span um, the, the opening, well, the depth of my uh, current lot at 3,900, which is roughly 40 by 153. And that backhand that is up against that lot, it's about 40 feet uh, deep, I guess, if you're going into the lot. Um, and again, we'd add appropriate landscaping elements to fulfill that. Um, there is lighting in front of the lot from city lighting, and there's also lighting coming from my existing building and from the neighboring building. And with that, I will stop to hear your comments and questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Snowball. Uh, we have uh, Marka Fields with her hand up, so go ahead, Marka. Yeah, I was just um, wanted to comment that uh, the, the parking that he's doing actually is not on the lot in question. It's actually all con now contained on his current lot. So he really there is my recommendation. There's nothing happening on the vacant lot that we uh, that he was initially trying to do the parking on. Mm -hmm. So all the parking is on his existing um, property that he has right. just presented to us. Yes. And um, so, are you saying he doesn't he doesn't need these variances now, Marka? No, because it's just green space now. There's no need to get a variance for green space. Okay. All right. Well, um, Madam Chair. This consolidation. Yes. Madam Chair, there is submit to building and housing for the new plan, but it's again, it's not on the lot. The lot that you're looking for is the land bank lot, which is. Ms. Kukla, did you want to respond to that? Um, yeah, sorry, I, I can't hear um, Ms. Fields, but uh, I did have one comment that the the there's a variance for drainage as well, and, and I don't see it on the plan here. Yeah. Um, so they may still need a variance from that. May I speak? Sure. Yeah, the, 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 the variance for that drainage was initially when we were going to pave um, that area for the seven car parking spaces, but currently um, there would be no parking on there. So there's no need for that drainage runoff. The, um, again, we could. So we just want to clear this up here. So the initial variance that you submitted for was for the vacant lot, which now we, you just have green space. And your move, the parking that you were going to have on that lot, you have moved on your existing property, and um, 
So the uh, initial vacant lot is now all green space. So paving and draining is not necessary for green space. Um, so the su suggestion of Ms. Fields is that you don't need these variances anymore and you probably should withdraw. So Ms. Kukla, um, are, are you in agreement with that? Yes, Madam Chair, I would um, just like clarification from Mr. Riccardi as well. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, that answers mm -hmm. the question about the paving and drainage. It seems as though they're not going to be updating that residential parcel, that purely zoned, or sorry, the split zoned residential parcel. But if we could defer to Mr. Riccardi about um, the, um, the the question about withdrawal of the, of the variances. I agree that he should withdraw this. This is, it's no longer the same lot. So it's, it, this, um, the, the hearing today regarding those issues, you know, is moot. So I would concur. All right, thank you, Mr. Riccardi. All right, Mr. Snowball, so just for the record, just ask us to withdraw your case. Okay, for the record, I request that you withdraw the case. All right, without objection board. Without objection, Madam Chair. Objection. All righty. You all withdraw, Mr. Snowball. Thanks for hanging out with us today. <laughs> but, uh, but, Sorry for the know, long wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. And thank you, Ms. Fields, for bringing that up. We wouldn't have, uh, we wouldn't even caught that. So thank you. All right. Moving on to the next case. Moving on to. Here we go. Looks like our last case for today, I think. This was postponed from September 27, 2021. This would be calendar number 21-130 at 10404 Harvard Avenue. Graster Girls LLC owner proposes to establish use as a residential facility for five occupants. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. Uh, of note, uh, the second postponement on this case was made at the request of the appellant to allow time to meet with the community. The first postponement was made at the request of the board to allow time for the appellant to meet with the councilwoman, the uh, councilman, and Marka Fields. To you, Ms. Brown, for the oath. Okay, I'm swearing in all who are present for this case. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please raise your hand and state I do. Provide your name and your address. I do. This is Tanisha Graster Thomas. My address is 9850 Royal Palm Boulevard, Cross Springs, Florida 33065. I do. Amanda Kramer, um, 9250 Miles Park Avenue. I do. Marcus Fields, Chief City Planner. I do. I do. I do. Angela Merriweather, 104. 02 Harvard Avenue. I do Nikia Okoye, 38 Little River Road, Rural, Maryland, 20724. Okay, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, did we get history last time, Ms. Kukla? Or do we need to? Yes, we, we did the history last time. Okay, so we don't need history of the property. Legal standard, please. Uh, yes, before I start, I'd like to question the um, applicant. Are there going to be five or fewer people in this facility? No, there are going to be eight, eight residents total. Okay, all right, then I, that affects the legal standard. Uh, okay, <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, appellant may be 
is requesting a use variance and is requesting area variances from the distance and off street parking requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship, particular to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. And the reason I ask this is because the beginning of this write-up says that this is a facility for five occupants, um, which would be allowed in a two-family district, but eight residents is not, so that, that's why the use variance comes into play. Okay, hey, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Lori. Um, okay, Ms. Thomas, are you the spokesperson for this case? Ms. Sequoia, yes. Um, okay. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Sequoia. Hello. I don't know if you guys can see me. I'm having a problem with my video here. Uh, okay, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair and the board um, for hearing um our statements on this matter. Uh, we've purchased the uh, corner lot property at uh, 104 Harvard Avenue uh, for the purpose of um, continuing uh, one of the um, one of the goals of um, <clears throat> our dad who uh, worked in assisted living his entire life, working with mental health patients, working with um, individuals who had special needs um and so one of his uh he worked in that in that uh field for more than 20 years before he passed and so one of the things we wanted to do with acquiring this building was just to kind of continue the work that he did in in this community uh, we all have been born were born and raised in this community um we have also acquired the uh and what we plan to do is provide mental health services, um, other support services for the residents of the building. We have acquired the uh, adjacent land through the side yard uh, program in order to provide a green space, a gardening program uh, for the residents of the building as well. Um, so we had, uh, I think initially said that five residents would be occupying the property, but it's a uh, four unit uh, building each unit has two bedrooms in the uh in the unit with the uh with the possibility to serve two patients or two residents uh per unit for a total of eight for the building and also have uh office space and space for uh programs that we have planned for the residents and support services uh, we have garnered support from uh, Councilman Bishop. Uh, he had asked that we do some basic improvements to the front of the building, which was paint the uh, the chip paint around the windows. Uh, we also were asked to uh, pave a parking lot, which we've done, and also asked to garner community uh, community support, which we've done uh, with, I believe, maybe maybe 50 or so um, signatures from uh, community residents. So. Um, yeah, I don't know if any of my sisters have anything to add, but we've also um, had the support of Ms. Marco Fields, um, who's uh, who we've met with over the past year about this project. Okay, anyone else from the project team or uh, family wants to speak? No, I don't have anything. Okay, thank you. Um, I will go to uh, Ms. Kramer, you're from the CDC, correct? My name is Angela. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, Ms. Kramer? Uh, yes, I'm from the CDC. Um, okay. 
Good morning, everybody. Amanda Kramer, Union Miles. Um, so I was, we had spoken with Nakia. I spoke with her with Marka um, about some of her plans for this project. And one of my questions was um, for the variance, if she could obtain that parcel next to it um, for parking, but I understand the Hello? need for improvement. Um, so if that takes precedent, um, I understand. And then I was also curious to see if they had spoken to the resident or the property owner that's directly south of them. Um, I think the address is 4067 East 104th. I, I heard them say they got a bunch of signatures, um, but it looks like that property would be pretty directly um, affected. So I was just interested to hear about that. Thank you, Ms. Kramer. Ms. Okoye, uh, did you all speak to this neighbor directly next door to you? Yes, I believe my um, sister Angela spoke with the neighbor in the rear who, who uh, also uh, advised us that, uh, um, that the building used to be used for this type of service before. And so they they don't have objection to you? They didn't express any objection. They expressed support. Okay. Thank you. Mary uh, Ms. Merriweather, did you want to chime in on that? Hello? Yes. Angela? I think she's having connection problems. She's having some connection problems, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll move on to Marka. She definitely did speak with her. I'm sorry. This is Tanisha. Um, she told me about the conversation. She definitely spoke with the lady behind her. She um, was definitely in support of it. She gave us a little history of the different things that the building has been used for in the past. Okay, and uh, she's actually just been happy that we've been there. We've been no. active, been working in. Excuse me? I think she's still having technical, so go ahead, Tanisha. Yeah, um, so if this is the lady that I'm, I'm, that I think we're talking about, she lives in, I believe it's a Cleveland Housing Network home that's right behind it, and she was in support of it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we'll move oh, to man. Marka now. Sorry, I was just going to add to Amanda's um, question. Who is this? Oh, this is Nakia Okoye speaking. Okay, you have to announce who you are first before you okay. jump in. Sorry. Okay, all right, go ahead. Yes, this is Nakia Okoye speaking um, to Amanda's question. Yes, we did acquire the lot um, adjacent to the building, and yes, we have already made the improvements that the councilman had requested us to do. Okay, great, thank you. All right, now, yes, we'll finally go to Marka Fields. Marka, Chief City Planner. Um, just, uh, and Marka, kind of speak up a little bit because your mic is real low. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Yeah, um, just wanted to express my support, for, um, City Planner support for this project. We, um, I've been talking with Nakia for over, um, and she has done pretty much everything that was requested. Yet she did uh, receive land bank lot next to um, offer green space for the residents. Um, and I know has a larger project that she plans to expand on uh, in that area. And so um, it's also in close proximity to a bus line, which I think is necessary for that particular population. So um, we are in support, we have no Objections to the Great. Thank you, Marka. All right, board, we have support from the councilman, the CDC, as well as city planning. So, unless you have any further questions, I will entertain a motion. This is Member Brown. I do have a question. Sure, go ahead. And I uh, appreciate the um, follow through on the applicant and the meeting with the community. And my only question has to do with, did you provide uh, an operations plan? And if you can um, inform me of uh, on-site um, supervision, plans for on-site supervision and the hours of that uh, at the home. Um, we submitted a business plan uh, to the city. And in terms of operations, um, the building, Angie, can you speak to the operations? Yes, I'm here. I'm so sorry. I apologize um, to the board. 
My name is Angela Merriweather, and I'm um, with Supportive Services for the State of Ohio. Um, yes, there will be a 24-hour monitoring system there that will have peer support services as well as supportive services with their mental health and SUV issues. Um, so whatever services that's rendered will be in, rendered in the building. So everything will be a one-stop shop. So um, it, everything will be shift out. So there will be no, uh, no, no time that no supervision or monitoring will not be available. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And also, I did go door to door. I went on 106th, 104th, and 108th. Um, and they really supported me. The only thing they were saying um, was like, this used to be a building for sexual offenders. I don't understand why they won't let y'all open it up. And so, and the lady behind me, she's been there for over 15 years. And she was saying, of course. That would really be nice. They liked it. The people on the street liked it the way we've upgraded the building. They like the um that we've um uh, put the the back together. And so it's it looks like a brand new building. And so a lot of people was in, in support of that. We're keeping the um the scrubbage together. Um we're mowing. Um so everything around the shrubbery is nice and neat. And so the other property owners and the other businesses on that street, they really, really appreciated it. So in other words, they were really welcoming us. All right, thank you, Ms. Merriweather. And um, your your uh, other applicants did support you, what you were saying here. So we have all that oh. information. Oh, okay. I, I had something was going on on my computer. I couldn't hear anything. So now yeah, I'm I know. <laughs> I know, no problem, but they had okay. your back. Don't worry about it. Okay, thank you very, very much. Mm-hmm. Okay, Member Brown, does that satisfy your question? Yes. Awesome. Um, okay. If no other further questions, I will entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, just uh, I'm just curious to know, and uh, I believe probably uh, uh, Mark Fields can probably answer this question. Uh, on the front portion of this lot, is that one uh, one wide curb cut across the front of the lot? And do we have, are we okay with the paving from the uh from the the uh apron to the building um so that actually is not something that we saw i was under the impression that parking was in the back i don't think it's a it's just a, a paved area okay um, are we are we looking we, to have that return to green space or what there was, what? There was not a request for it to turn to return to green space although probably look a little bit better if it were, um, but we did not make that request. Okay. Madam Chair, I, I don't know if that's a curb cut in the front. It might just be a low curb um, yeah. as yeah. a result of constant repaving projects. Yeah, so it does look what, like a curb cut, like but I don't me. think it is. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like to me. Is it, I don't, it doesn't look like a curb cut. Um, I would wonder if the applicant would be willing to return that paved area to green space with walkway, if the parking's gonna be in the back? Uh, there is walkway already there, ma'am. So the front of the building has walkway and there is initially off street parking because this is the first thing that we um, ran into when I first submitted the paperwork. So the lady had, um, who introduced um, me to the way of going about this introduced me to in the wrong manner. So she was saying that actually we did not need parking back there because there was on street, off street parking. So there's also off street parking along with the parking lot that we have. So in the front, that's all concrete and it is an area for um, people who walk past or whatnot. So all that is concrete. And so the green area is right beside the building, which is um, the lot that we purchased. So that would be where the garden will be at. Right, my question is, <sighs> is, is your intent to use that paved area at the front of the building for parking or do you have adequate parking in the back? Yes, ma'am, we have adequate parking in the back and we also have off street parking. Okay, so my question is then, would you be willing to remove that concrete in the front, except for necessary walkway 
and return that to grass and landscaping? So it was never it was never grass and landscaping there, ma'am. It, it was it was never that it was never that. It's always been concrete right there. And, um, and but my question is, are you willing to return it to grass? So that you don't have a paved front, it would it would aid in the appearance to the building. And and I understand that. Is that is that something that we would have to do? Because that's expensive. Well, it, I'm asking you to be willing to do it. Oh, okay, yes, ma'am. I, I I can we can see how that looks. I I you uh. Hello, this is Nikia Okoye speaking. Um, uh, we could definitely take a look at that uh, so that, you know, it could provide a seamless um, flow on the front space. Uh, we can definitely look into that and we'll be willing to return it to green space for a better look. Uh, that would be that would be excellent. We're not going to make it a condition of the oh. of the uh, approval, but that is something that we always look to have happen. When we're making uh, changes to buildings and and use changes like this, um, you know, it we like to aid in the in the uh, streets the the street view of the building. Um, so we would appreciate it if you would uh, uh, do what you can to return it to a, a green area. Um, Absolutely, thank you. That is something we, we we will entertain as we develop the lot next to it for our great. Group. Right, that would that would be, um, I think that would give you a more cohesive look as you as you move forward in your land development there. Uh, Madam Chair, with that, uh, that answers, I think all of our, our questions from the board. Uh, we have, uh, we have support from city planning. Uh, and it seems we have support from residents and the council person. I don't think we have a letter from the council person do we Ms. Kukla. No, I don't have one in the file. Okay, well, we have testimony that he was in support. Uh, so with that, I move that we go ahead and approve 21-130, Madam Chair. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Member Brown, I second. All right, Ms. Brown, second. Call the roll, please, Ms. Cooksa. Ms. Barnes? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Vaith? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Calendar 21-130 is granted. It'll be ratified next week and we will send you a letter. All right, thank you. Good luck, ladies. Thank you all. Thank you. Good luck thank to you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Great project. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Looking forward to see how it comes along. We thank are you. so much. <laughs> grateful, very grateful. All right, old business. Okay. Three, Open. four, and five without objection. I have without seen. objection. Thank you. And that concludes the meeting for today. We got it. Thank the Lord. <laughs> and considering we had seven cases, I think we motored through that pretty well. And yeah, one Sherman was a Williams. huge case. Yeah, Sherman yes. Williams was a was a minute. So yeah. Yeah. All right, everyone. Have a good week. All right. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thanks. Great All job right. today, Thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you, Liz. Thank you.